Where did half the roster go in Minneapolis? Locked on women's basketball starts now. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Well, hi there and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. Two sleeps until the WNBA season begins. I am Howard Meddahl, host of Locked On Women's Basketball, editor and founder at The Next. You can follow our work 24-7-365 at thenexthoops.com. Make sure you subscribe. Locked on WBB, of course, is where to get us on Twitter in order to listen every single weekday. And we thank you for making us your first listen. And we are here today with Lucas Seehafer. Lucas, am I saying your name right? Yeah, it's actually Seehofer, but I never correct anybody when they say Seehafer. No, but let's get this right, because you're going to be on here a lot, because the Minnesota Lynch are very interested. Yeah. Lucas Seehofer, Lucas has been writing about the Lynch for me, uh, has a wonderful preview set to go out later this afternoon, um, just does excellent work on this team. And so, just full disclosure, he had written a preview. Preview was about to be edited, we were going to put it all together, and then we get this email, I'm just going gonna to read it. Headline, Lynch sign guard Odyssey Sims. It's the big, the big headline. And what's what's the subhead? Oh, oh, six waved from training camp. Six waved from training camp. Laser Clarendon, Crystal Dangerfield, Yvonne Turner, Renaya Davis, Kayla Jones, Hannah Servin. Six waved from training camp. So, Lucas, I guess just to start. How shocked were you about this happening? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it'd be an understatement to say that most of us uh, that, you know, cover the team or around the team um, frequently, we're, we're pretty surprised. Um, you know, behind the scenes, a bunch of us reporters had kind of talked about, you know, what were they going to do? Um, how are they going to handle this? Because really, um, the Lynx didn't have much in, in terms of uh, cap space. You know, they, they were going to have to make tough decisions. And, and Cheryl Reef had said that, you know, from the beginning that they were going to have to be, you know, open and, and able to make tough decisions and decisions that they think were uncomfortable. Um, so it, it kind of went without saying that there were going to be some major moves uh, and that the Lynx were going to leave training camp with potentially some, some major players uh, missing off their roster. Um, but I think the, the, the news that broke initially was that Odyssey Sims had signed uh, her training camp deal. Uh, with the links, and that was something that was completely unexpected. Um, you know, and there was, um, you know, maybe a little bit of um, indication that the links had talked to Sims earlier uh, mm -hmm. in the season or in the off season, um, but then it, it was radio silent. Well, anyway, signed Sims, um, and then the release of, of you know. Crystal Dangerfield, Lasia Clarendon, Renaya Davis, like those were kind of the, the main uh, surprises. It was always kind of a, a, a thought that, you know, maybe one of Dangerfield or Davis were going to be cut just for, for money reasons. And I don't think anybody saw uh, Lasia uh, being cut coming. You know, Lasia Clarendon obviously has a resume that speaks for itself in this league and she's made an all-star team and they have an opportunity now I guess to pursue a free agency or maybe be brought back on a hardship deal. Uh, and just, I, I'm going to vary the pronouns because Laser uses all pronouns. Um, just so our listeners are aware. And so for him to get cut when you are looking at a player whose assist percentage was 37.3% last year, you know, really made the Minnesota Lynch go. It's a big chance that Cheryl Weave has taken. And, and I say this, with the full understanding and full disclosure, Cheryl Reeve is an executive of the year. Cheryl Reeve has helped put together teams that won four WNBA titles and has been to other uh, numerous other WNBA playoff appearances, including other finals. So she's seeing things that we're not seeing. But what's your level of concern in terms of 
simply not having Lazio as a playmaker moving forward in this season. Yeah, I think it's got to be a pretty major concern, especially since, you know, not only do you not have Lay anymore, but you also don't have Crystal, who was rookie of the year two seasons ago and backup point guard last year. Um, granted, she struggled, but still uh, experience within the system. Um, you know, Lay, when she came on uh, last summer, uh, really brought a new element uh, to, to the links on what they were looking for. Um, they were able to, you know, control the offense uh function, you know, extremely well out of the pick and roll, um, kind of formed a, a nice duo with, you know, not only Sylvia Fowles, but Nafisha Collier, um, Demir Estantis, uh, all that. Um, now with those two gone, uh, the Lynx are going to be re relying pretty heavily on, uh, not only Odyssey Sims, who hasn't played with the team since 2019, um, uh, but also, uh, Rachel Bannum. Uh, she, uh, and, you know, both Bannum and Reeve had mentioned uh, at multiple times during the offseason that uh, they consider her now to be a true number one, uh, no longer a, a combo guard or even a, a mostly a two. And we saw that quite a bit in the in their um, preseason games where uh, Rachel was functioning as as the one quite a bit. Um, now, she doesn't have a ton of experience uh, as the one in the WNBA. Um, Odyssey Sims, her production and and overall abilities at this time, she's no longer at kind of the peak of her powers. Um, so Reeve is really kind of um, banking on not only Bantam taking a step forward, uh, but Odyssey Sims maybe returning to her uh, all-star uh, level of play that she had in 2019. Um, how big of an ask that is, I guess that's that's to be determined. And, and very soon. I, I mean, it, it's a fascinating roll of the dice. It's the type of thing where if you saw it from – a less experienced general manager, you would think, oh, God, what's going on here? You know, to me, I'm somebody who's very much willing to withhold judgment and see, especially when you look at track record. And I think that comes into play here as well. So I'm fascinated to see it. Right. But you mentioned, you know, Crystal Dangerfield going. You just look back on that Lynch team from last year. and They were a top five offense. You know, they they managed to finish mm -hmm. like 22 and 12 on the strength, not just to their defense, but their offense, but just in terms of who was distributing the top three in assists last year were Lasia, were Nafisa Collier was second, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. Collier, what a ridiculously talented player. And then, and then Crystal Dangerfield third. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it seems like, and you mentioned it, and I, I kept flashing back to it in the moments after we got this news that the Lynch had cut six players, was that comment about Bantam being a true one. And now it felt like foreshadowing, right? Now you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That was the idea behind it. And Sims, to her credit, you know, she made an all-star team in, in, in Minnesota, and her assist uh, percentages have been up around 30%. So it's not as if she mm -hmm. is some two guard who would be moonlighting. It, it, it's a very interesting combination, but it's different. And it's different from a team that we already knew was going to have to look different in some fundamental ways with Nafisa Collier missing at least part of the season due to her pregnancy. Uh, so just, mm -hmm. I guess... From what you've seen, where do you think Rachel Bannum fits as a true one at this point in this league? How confident are you that she can do it? Yeah, uh, you know, quite honestly, I think she has a lot that she needs to prove. Um, we, we've seen her uh, play in the past um, and her overall consistency is kind of, you know, she's kind of been an up and down player when she's, you know, knocking down the three. She's um, she's been, you know. She's a really solid outside shooter. Um, but when you look at her uh, abilities in other situations, the pick and roll uh, defensively, you know, just being a floor general, um, she just doesn't have that experience at the WNBA. Um, so to, to, you know, put her, you know, where does she fall in the, you know, the top, let's say 12 uh, point guards in the league, because, you know, there's 12 starters, so there's got to be 12 best. Yeah. Um, I would, you know, she's got to be middle, maybe towards towards the the end. But she has the potential if she plays within herself, doesn't turn the ball over, uh, knocks down the outside threes, doesn't 
uh, play outside of her abilities, I, I think she, she can do fine. Um, it's just, when will she get to that point? Especially, you know, at the beginning of the year, you mentioned that the, the team won't have uh, Nafisa Collier, but they also won't have Kayla McBride, who's still over in Europe, won't be back until uh, the end of, probably the end of May, beginning of June. Mm-hmm. And then they won't have Demiris Dantas uh, for, uh, it's really up in the air as she still recovers from a foot injury. Um, so at the beginning of the season, the Lynx are going to really have to rely on Sylvia Fowles, Ariel Powers, and Rachel Bantam to kind of carry the load on, on both sides of, of the court. And that's going to be, that's going to be a big ask, especially when you take a look at who the, the Lynx play over the first eight or nine games of the year um, until McBride gets back. It's going to be, it's going to be a tough road for them at the beginning of the season, I think. Prioritization cannot come soon enough for the Minnesota Lynx, clearly. And so I want to talk a little bit about that about some of the other players uh, who are missing and what's to come for each of those who made it, including Jessica Shepard. We need to have probably a full show about Jessica Shepard at some point, who has been someone I've covered since she was at Nebraska. But first, I want to talk to you all about Built Bars. Summer is coming, and so are my Built Bars, by the way. I placed my order this week. I've got a mix of the puffs. I've got some double chocolate coming. They have built granola bars. Yeah, I can't wait to see what those are because built bars have the taste of candy bars, but in fact, they do not have the nutrition of candy bars. 140 calories max in a built puffs, four grams net carbs, 17 grams of protein. You're eating marshmallows, but you're getting 17 grams of protein. Just an amazing amazing experience psychologically as well as physically. So go to built.com and use promo code locked 15 L O C K E D and get 15% off your order the way my mom urged me to. And I did this week because I do a lot of working on the go, need something with some nutrition in it. When I go cover a game, that's promo code locked 15 L O C K E D one five for 15% off at built.com. And Lucas, please tell them Grandma Myrna sent you. Will do. Appreciate it. So we should also talk about some of the other, well, I feel like we're not even going to get to everyone who got cut here, but I want to get to Renaya Davis, who was the first Mm -hmm. round pick last year. You wrote a terrific piece about how much Renaya looked improved this past offseason coming in here. She was the ninth overall pick. I know the Lynch were thrilled to get her. What changed? Was it just simply a numbers game? Was it simply that Jessica Shepard looked this good in camp? Because in many ways, it feels like Shepard and Davis were fighting for one slot. Yeah, it's tough to say. Because like you said, uh, her her play, uh, she played a little bit in Australia, but did most of her play in Israel. Um, and that was something that the Lynx had asked her to do, uh, and, and she did because they didn't want her coming back, not having played for over a year uh, from her from her foot injury. Um, and she looked really good, um, was rebounding the ball, was kind of the focus of the offense over there. Um, her outside shot uh, looked pretty good, uh, maybe a little on the on the slow side, but from what it was compared to when she was at Tennessee, it was looked great. Um, Unfortunately, didn't get to see the first preseason game because it was in Washington. Um, but the next one against uh, Las Vegas was at home and I was there in person. And she looked really, really good on both sides of the ball. She was hustling. She she posted, a, I think it was a 13-point, 10-rebound, double-double. Um, hit a three, corner three, looked really solid. Um, so as far as why she was cut, I do think it was ultimately a numbers thing. Um Uh, Because she was a first round pick and because she was a first round pick, you know, multiple years uh, after Jessica Shepard, who was a second round pick, um, her cap hit was significantly higher. Um, Like I forget the exact number, but maybe 7,000, 8,000, something like that. Um, And by the time that all of the cuts were made, the links were going to have to part with about $130,000, give or take. So, um, Clarendon was about 90,000 that was cleared off the books. And with the cut of uh, Davis and Dangerfield, um, uh, the Lynx were able, I think they're, they're now about $20,000 over the cap, give or take. Um, but as far as overall play, 
uh, you know, what, what Shepard excels at uh, and within this specific offense is she's probably one of the best entry passers, uh, particularly out of the high post on the team. And that's not a skill uh, that Renai Davis necessarily had, uh, but it's a skill that Cheryl Reeve really um, appreciates uh, and, and really values. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think she values kind of what Shepard did uh, in, in Italy over uh, during the winter season and how she just put up monster numbers, both offensively and on the boards. Um, so I think, yeah, it really came down to, to those two. And at the end of the day, the links went with, okay, who's cheaper and who has the, the skill set and the positional versatility that we, uh, that we value more. Um, and at the end of the day, they went with Shepard. I just think, and you, you touched on it, there's a general stat that illuminates, I think, what Jessica Shepard can do, which is to say her career assist percentage, which is just a, a crazy number for somebody her size and the role she's played is 25.3%, you know, which is guard-like. And mm-hmm. specifically, when this is a team that's going to rely as much as it's going to, especially early on, on Sylvia Fowles, being able to make that entry pass is going to matter more for the Lynx than you could argue any other team in the league. And so mm-hmm. having Jessica Shepard on hand to do that matters. I also happen to believe, uh, dating back to her Nebraska days, that Jessica Shepard has range and the ability to shoot the three. I think that is something we can and will see the Lynch continue to expand in her game. And considering that the Lynch figured out a way to get Rebecca Brunson to do that somehow in, the mid, in her mid-30s, I think Shepard at age 25 has an opportunity to do that as well. So I'm very interested to see how much, again, it'll be an expanded role because everyone who's there will be playing an expanded role, especially early on, that this comes to pass for the Minnesota Lynch. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. Now, I, I want to get into the early start, and also how last year informs this year. Um, We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I want to talk about BetOnline first because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Now, again, they say all when they have the ad copy to me, but I I consider the word all very differently, right? There are people who say all, oh, MLB, NBA, NFL. To me, all means this is a place where you can bet on the WNBA. This is a place that had March Madness odds. This is a place that allows women's sports to assume its rightful place alongside men's sports as well. And that matters. That matters for women's sports. Quite frankly, it matters for the fan who is interested in doing both. Bet Online is your continued source for, again, all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So the Minnesota Lynch got off to what I would say was not. Here's the phrase that we'd use. You familiar with Mad Men? Pete Campbell gets on the elevator. Show a return to Pete Campbell. How was our start last year? Not great, no, they- <laughs> yeah, exactly. 0 and 4 finished 22 and 12, which means I'll do the math for those listening. 22 and 8 after that start. How much do you think, A, that gives Cheryl Reeve confidence to be able to tinker? And B, how reassuring is that to Minnesota Lynch fans who were pretty concerned if my Twitter mentions or any indication after that 0-4 start. Yeah, I think Cheryl is definitely very confident in the, in the team that she has assembled. Um, you know, we, we've kind of asked her about that kind of through the course of the off season and, uh, and during the preseason. Um, and she just kind of kept iterating that, you know, there's a lot of talent on the team and that they're ultimately going to go with the team that they think provides them the best chance to win. Um, I think we should probably mention that perhaps one reason why uh, Lay was ultimately cut uh, was because there was Cheryl had mentioned she didn't think that Lay was completely ready and healed uh, to be able to play at a high level and do so consistently. Um, so that played, it sounded like a major role in why they ended up going with Sims. Um, now, uh, that caveat is that if you look at the schedule, when did the Lynx start turning it around? 
when Lay joined. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think Cheryl is confident in that, you know, if they start off slow, they will be able to, to turn it around. Um, but I think, you know, I think that should be questioned a little bit. I'm not saying that the Lynx can't do it. I, I think they're still a, a highly talented team and, and uh, will go as far as Sylvia Fowles and, and, and their starters take them. Mm -hmm. um, but Lay was a, was a major catalyst behind that final stretch uh, and why they ended up doing so well. Uh, so it's going to be on Bantam and Sims to, to kind of pick up that torch and either one, make sure the Lynx don't start off slow, or if they do, when McBride comes back, uh, that they're able to run at all cylinders. The flip side of the track record of Cheryl Reeve and withholding judgment, you wait and see, is they just got to go out and prove it again and again, right? You know, Minnesota Lynx, just because they found their way in 2021, doesn't mean they've done it yet in 2022. So, you know, to your point, it makes a great deal of sense to be able to see what they are able to do. And I guess to just sort of round this out, at what point in the schedule would you say it's gotten late? When you looked at this, you talked about the first eight, nine games. Mm -hmm. Only a 36-game schedule it runs through August 14th. At what point are you mm -hmm. sitting there concerned if they haven't found a way to run in a similar way efficiency-wise to what they did last year, uh, especially in the offensive end? Yeah, you know, I think it could be as early as that first eight and nine games, depending on how they look and how they do. Um, to, to play a little spoiler in the, in the preview come in, uh, that's coming up this afternoon, I think I said that uh, the Lynx really need to, to be around 500 or win like four or five of their first nine games. Mm -hmm. um, if I think if they want to compete not only for a playoff spot, but ultimately for a, for a home court advantage. Right. Um, beyond that, you know, as you said, there's only 36 games. This isn't like a, dub, or a NBA season where you get 82 and you can kind of have peaks and valleys and, and fight through some stuff. If you start off slow or if you, you know, lose a bunch of games in a row, it's tough to, to surmount that lead or uh, to surmount that valley. Um, obviously, teams like Chicago last year uh, finished the regular season with like a 500 record and ended up winning the WNBA title. So it's not saying it's impossible. Um, but I think if the Lynx find themselves, you know, four, five, six games under 500 and we're uh, reaching that halfway point of the season, I think that'd be about time to uh, to get fairly concerned. Uh, that being said, if they're at, uh, above 500 or they're uh, at 500 at around that same time, then it's probably okay to be like, okay, they're going to go through, they're going through some growing pains, but they're still in the thick of, of the chase. Um, and ultimately I do think they are a playoff team. I think they will make the playoffs just because their high end talent is just uh, too high. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be, it'll be uh, interesting to, to watch how the season unfolds. Sylvie Fowles won't go out without a playoff berth. That would be, that would be criminal for the game of vegetable writ large, without question. And Lutacy offer, everyone can go to the nexttubes.com, read that preview this afternoon. Um, but you touched on, and before I let you go, something really interesting. A, a lot of people don't know this, but um, men play basketball too. And so we appreciate you making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. Uh, but now make your second listen, Locked On NBA, the lead you touched on. From the first jump ball, the play-in tournament, to the last possession of the finals. I, Minnesota even has an NBA team, right? Uh, alongside the Lynx, is that true? Yeah, they, they do. And they actually uh, did all right this year for the first time in almost nearly franchise history. <laughs> Newsworthy to be sure. So <laughs> lockdown experts take you deep inside the playoffs with expert analysis and insight affecting, is this right, all 30 teams? There's a lead with 30 teams because the – WNBA has 12, so maybe we need to find a way to even That's that. Change. And maybe another 18 teams in the WNBA. But, yes, make sure you list on Locked on NBA. We, we have wonderful experts over there as well uh, for the season that takes you from one WNBA season to the next. Lucas offer. thank you so much for your time. Really excited. I learned a lot, including how to say your last name. So I think this was wonderful <laughs> for everyone involved. Awesome. Thank you so much, Howard. We'll talk to you again soon. Locked on women's basketball. 
your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.